anyway we don't have power um, in our neighborhood and um, uh, our gen center has got a, an airlock so I I can't I can't wait for 20 hours oh. okay thank you I get shot yeah so I don't we don't have power and um, uh, our gen said has got an airlock of course we must say that we haven't been having this load shading so you don't that is anticipate power to go off so our genset has really just been packed it needs somebody to come and uh, uh you know touch it so we are in the dark and um, i thought i could just uh, uh talk about what i had promised earlier um, i think it is okay to start earlier than to start later because those who will join in at 20 hours they would have they will find that i've already spoken and they will listen to whatever i had uh, said if in if at all i mean they want to you know to follow the good thing about social media and this broadcast is that at any time somebody can be able to listen so it's not a matter of saying no you have to be live and watch it live i mean other people watch these videos you know much later others will be watching in the morning and so on and so forth so but i just want to emphasize uh, um uh, two points two points that i had spoken about earlier on in the day earlier on in the day in the morning i started talking about uh, emelin kavanshi i want to reiterate this point asking president uh, haka in the Hichlema to consider um pardoning the uh, emelin kavanshi i am really insisting on this because by Emelin Kavanshi was a sacrificial lamb. By Emelin Kavanshi was a sacrificial lamb. By Emelin Kavanshi, she's not a criminal. By Emelin Kavanshi does not have those assets of proceeds of crime. She doesn't have. She's an innocent woman who made a mistake or who abused her office in trying to save the poor. She thought she was doing the right thing by bulldozing at the ministry to give the contract to Zampost. We all know Zampost is a government institution. She did not push for Zampost to be given that contract because she wanted to get a kickback, like what many other um, uh, government officials were doing. That was not the essence. We know we have got a number of projects which were inflated. We have got a number of projects which were given to friends so that people can get kickbacks. But this is not a situation with Vaimedin Kavanshi. Vaimedin Kavanshi was trying to help the poor. She thought she was helping the poor. And that was the intention. Because before, agents were going into the community with money and that money some of them they were not taking some of them were giving less to the vulnerables and she thought if it is given to zampost zampost will be able to distribute that ma that money uh in a fair and just manner unfortunately she bulldozed her way she abused her office she did not get money out of the social cash transfer if money was misappropriated at Zampos, that is another story. But from her point of view, she did not do that so that she can get money. So I am appealing to our president, Daka Inde Ichilema, that please consider her a Merin Kavanshi. She was a sacrificial lamb. Ever since she was fired, she was totally ignored. But Daka Inde Ichilema, you will remember this woman. And you remember that from the time that she was fired, you heard nothing of her. No one was even talking about her. No one talks about Vaimerin Kavanshi in PF. No one talks about Vaimerin Kavanshi. No one talks about Vaimerin Kavanshi in PF. No one has been communicating with Vaimerin Kavanshi.
I had an opportunity this afternoon after the video that I spoke and uh, somebody close to by Merin Kawan, she called me and told me how she has suffered, told me how sick she is, told me how she has been neglected by her PF, how she has been neglected by her PF. By Merin Kawan, she is not a criminal whom you can say no aleiva so we, we 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 left her because she's a criminal no she wasn't she wasn't and by Merin Kawan, she, she's one of those so-called trustees of the pf but she was totally dumped ignored neglected the woman has suffered enough has suffered rejection we know that there are a number of people giants in pf who made money and they have not been touched they have not been touched so na papata by in the hdma i'm begging you i'm really begging you ba haka in the hdma please consider that sister of ours she's a sacrificial lamb you know ba haka in the hdma you know people who have stolen you know but if those people have stolen her out there, why should we let a poor woman, a poor woman who was only trying to, to, to do her work but made a mistake along the way, why should we let her suffer? I am appealing to you, Haka in the Ichinema, please consider that. So the next point, what I spoke about even earlier on, is the issue of uh, Baneva Smumba. Baneva Smumba has gone on rampage complaining and being outrageous to say yeah those people should be arrested and charged with espionage but never smumba i think there come a time when you have to concede there come a time when you have to concede you cannot continue being a hypocrite masquerading to be a man of god and yet you know very well what you do masquerading to be a man of honor a man of dignity when you are a convict i mean if we are condemning others why should we spare you why should we spare you so that issue of saying no charge them with espionage no there is no espionage there is we are not being a danger to this country no no it's you who is being a danger to this country it's you who is actually misleading President uh, Haka Inde Hichirim. It's you who has caused this strife between Zimbabwe and Zambia. It's you. Because of your, your utterances. Because you like this glorification. Whenever you are given a space, you want to extend it. You want to reach heaven. Whenever you are given a, a small platform, you, you want to fly and be in heaven. And you have caused you have caused this this tension between Zambia and 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 Zimbabwe. It is you, not us. It is you who made careless statements there. It is you who fraternized with the opposition in a country where you are supposed to offer checks, where you are supposed to observe elections. You showed bias. It is not me and the rest who went to Zimbabwe to go and talk. It is the Zimbabweans who came to this country. Why did they come here? You should ask yourself, Vanessa Smumba, why did those Zimbabwean journalists come into Zambia and started invite, uh, interviewing us? Why did they do that? Why did they do that? Ask yourself, Vanessa Smumba. Why did they do that? It is because of you. You are the one. Nimomwa it is you who went and started that fight. It is you who brought this tension whereby now Haka Inde Ichirema doesn't know whether he should congratulate Munangagwa or not because of you. Haka Inde Ichirema now is in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a dilemma. He doesn't know. Should he congratulate uh, Munangagwa or not? Because of the statements that you made. You could have seen biasness, you could have seen whatever it is, but you would have brought it out in a more 
diplomatic manner such that you leave space for president haka inde hichirema to you know to act freely wa never smumba you have tied haka inde hichirema you have tied him you are the one who has tied haka inde hichirema because haka inde hichirema now is failing to make a statement as regard to the elections in zimbabwe he is the one who appointed you and you have gone there and you have said no these elections were were, were fake you didn't see, you didn't use the word fake but you implied it in this in the statements that you came up you implied it so a person that chose you is failing to come out a person that sent you is failing to come out because of the statements that you made so if there is any anyone who is a danger nimweoba never smumba not us we didn't go to zimbabwe from nowhere to say yeah why should we even be talking about you why should we go to that level it is because and they started asking us who is this man and we gave them our opinion we gave them our opinion where is the danger as far as i'm concerned i gave them an opinion on you not on me haka in the hdm on you i gave a statement on you so there is nothing like hey what what are espionage forget it there is nothing there is totally nothing and the uh, i mean i don't think the police eh, these days at least i'm even talking to some of these police officers and i'm telling you i'm enjoying my relationship with the police trust me I've been enjoying my relationship with the police because, you know, they are reasonable. They are the, the kind of police officer that I'm talking that I'm talking to now. I am I am I'm feeling proud that we have got police officers who reason. You know, it. I used to feel that you know they are just uh, uh, these uh, junkies who just act anyhow. No, they are being very very reasonable, and I appreciate. I really appreciate. So I never smumba na papa don't start fantasizing and to say what 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 defamation defamation can you go and stand court to say defamation with tuma records can you go and stand in court to move never smumba no tuma record tramwa kwat in kongole kuma plot kunshi 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 honestly eh na ine une ne mushani na what na na ri kwat kongole yes but at least my life is better want na kwat ra kwen kongole you know the circumstances they can even understand and they understand not imo wa mdare nko ngore mwa kwata kuisa 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 ah wuna imwe eh ero mwise mtampo kula tuwe but not that we have no morals eh even if it's politics whatever whatever wa mdara no so anyway that is that um that is not my main issue for tonight let me now come to this issue relating to ba edgar chagwalung and I want to appeal to you that please, as I talk about this issue, as I talk as I talk about this issue, please, I want you to listen to me objectively. I am not here to scandalize, uh, to speak bad of uh, the president, president, former president. No, no. I just want us as a country, you know, to have a bit of understanding to share of about these kind of uh, these issues because not everyone really understand these issues and i'm not saying that i'm i mean i have all the the answers and everything no i give my point of view i give my point of view and you know you may also have a different point of view it is a pity that tonight i'm not going to open phone calls because i mean I'm not doing this in my usual uh, my usual office. I'm doing this in the car. But I want to give my side. And, you know, I will start from the legal point of view. I'm not going to start quoting Atiko Chakuti, Atiko Chakuti. No, I'm not going to do that. The issue is, we are talking about uh, the rights of, uh, of, uh, of, of citizens here. President Edgar Chagwalungu is a citizen, just like I'm a citizen and, 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 the, and the rest of you. 
and as citizens we have rights and one of the rights that we have is freedom of movement we have that right it is our right we are we are not supposed to be restricted in our movement according to the law from the legal point of view no one is supposed to be restricted to uh, move from anywhere no one we have that right it is our right to go anywhere within the country outside the country as long as we have the money as long as we meet the conditions of those countries wherever we want to go to as long as we don't you know we don't infringe on the law in any way we have the right to movement this is where i'm starting from this is our legal right i hope you get me very clearly on that that all of us, all of us, all of us, including our president, Edgar Chagwalungu, he has the right to move. No one should stop him from going anywhere. Locally, internationally, he is free to, to move around. So that is the first point given. Now, unfortunately, there is, there are two uh, terms which I want to bring in that is politically exposed and persons of interest to the state politically exposed and persons of interest to the state now much as we have this right all of us we have the right to move but you know if you are if you are Politic, if you are politically exposed, if you are politically exposed, depending on the level at which you are, really, all the time when you are mentioned as politically exposed, all the time when that comes in, the, 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 um, what is the word? The vetting goes higher. The due diligence is higher. The due diligence is higher because as much as you have got all this right and whatever, whatever. But if you are moving from one place to the other and there are some regressions that you have to, uh, there is some, some regression that has to be fulfilled. The due diligence or the vetting is higher to a politically exposed person. A good example that I can tell you, for example, if myself and uh, and uh, somebody who is not politically exposed travel to a country we present our passports the moment we present our passports and that country realizes that this is true fatali is a politician they will check me thoroughly the vetting the clearance they will they will take more time to check me why is he coming to this country what is his interest so if they are asking you questions to give before they give you a visa they will ask you more questions than a person who is not politically exposed this is just what it is you won't find it in the laws uh -uh. don't tell me where is it in the constitution it is not there but it is common practice that politically exposed people are checked more than those who are not politically exposed. It is just a general rule. So whenever you are moving as a politically exposed person, you need to be more careful and you might need some clearance you might need some clearance as a politically exposed person because wherever we go more questions are asked than those who aren't this is not to say we don't have the right to movement we have the right to movement but depending on how exposed you are politically you may have to answer more questions and in some cases you may have to Clear yourself with the authorities before you make a move. 
This is a fact. Whether you like it or not, it is a fact. So, depending on who you are, really, depending on who you are, and how exposed, how politically you are exposed, you need, you need, uh, you know, to do more due diligence or prepare yourself more than anybody else. In this case, for example, yes, I'm a politician, but certainly I'm not a former president. Certainly I'm not a former president. So, if I'm going somewhere, yes, they will vet me, yes, they will check me, but it will not be the same when you are talking about Edgar Chagwalungu. Edgar Chagwalungu is different. Just passing by the airport there to go out, yes, we all have the right to move, but me, when I'm going out, they will check thoroughly. If they have to ask me questions, they will ask me some questions. But when it is Ed Galungu, it is even worse. When it is Ed Galungu, it is even worse. This is a fact. Politically exposed person. But we can even go further. When it is by Ed Galungu, there is there are practices which are supposed to be followed for former heads of state. Former heads of state are actually state assets. Former heads of states are actually state assets. Heads of states, former heads of state, they are actually state assets. Meaning, a, a former president cannot just move anyhow, no. And this is a fact. You can't. Because you are a state asset. But Ed Galungu is not like me. But Ed Galungu is not like a Bamdala of Fred member. No, there is a difference. But Ed Galungu is a state asset. Anything that happens, the state is responsible. The state is questioned. That is why the Ed Galungu, as we speak, he has security. Until he dies, until he dies, even in his death, there will be security. Even in his death, is still a state asset. A good example is what happened to Bakaunda. Bakaunda, the children wanted to bury him at their farm. But they told them, no, he's a state asset. We have to bury him according to the state preparations, according to the state uh, uh, requirements. And where they are buried there, there are guards who are, men, who are, who are manning them, who are, who, who are guarding that place. So even in their death, there are people who who are, I mean are there so but Edgar Lungu cannot just move anyhow no he can't even if he wants to even if he wants to he is a state asset the security the security the state security must be informed the state security must be must clear him I remember whenever Edgar Lungu before our president, you know, about the president BC, but I saw it that you know, if you have a president, you know, before why? Because there are too many restrictions. He said, One day I was acting, and the chungu, I said, I want to go to, to Chawama, and the security said, No, you can't go, you can't go until whatever, whatever. And he said, I had to wait for three hours before I could go and see a person in Chawama. Because that position, the moment you step in that position, fear change. Even HH, don't be cheated. Even HH, President HH, where he is right now, President HH cannot just stand up and say, hey, let's go Kwakuti. He can't do it. He is the president, he is incumbent. He is incumbent. So 
with instruments of power. He cannot just step out to say, Nafmam Community House, I want to go and sit there. He can't. He can't do it. He is the incumbent. If you find them, you have a name. It's the truth. It is just what it is. You may not like it, but this is just what it is. Imagine the head of state himself with instruments of power cannot walk out of that community house and say, I want to go wherever. The security has to clear him because it's the state of is the state asset. It's the state asset. And this is not only peculiar to Zambia. It is not only happening in Zambia. It happens everywhere. Former heads of state, including Obama, if you go to America, Obama, Bush, uh, Bill Clinton, all those, they don't just wake up and stand up, I'm going Kwakut. No, they have to be cleared by the security, by the state security. And that state security has is is there because they are state assets so please let us see let us help one another let us because we will never develop if we if we lie if we lie to one another let us not lie to each other that president edika chagwalungu can just jack can just stand up and go anywhere uh -uh. unfortunately he's a former president even if he doesn't want the security. He can't do it. Same with the incumbent. He can't do it. Don't be cheated that no, he's the head of state. He can just command. No. When it comes to security issues, it is the state that prevails at the end of the day. So, by Edgar Lungu, we must understand, first of all, that he is not as free as you and I may be. But again, even you and I, between you and I, myself, I also cannot do certain things anyhow. I can't. I allow, I can't. Certain things I can't. Because I'm politically exposed. I'm politically exposed. So, then there is this issue of, you know, a person of interest. I'm talking about politically exposed, but a person of interest, a person of interest also cannot just move anyhow, especially if you know that you're a person of interest. For me, for example, the last time I was going to Ethiopia, the last time I was going to Ethiopia, when my wife was in Ethiopia, before I bought a ticket, I went to force headquarters and told the officer in charge, Crime One, to say i am a person of your interest i want to inform you that i want to go to ethiopia i want to buy a ticket and he had to clear me to say no it's okay you can go ahead that is when i went and bought a ticket and i flew out of the country without an incident even now i can't just go i can't tomorrow i can't just fly out no i would have to go and inform the police because I'm a person of interest. How am I a person of interest? I'm, I'm not talking about the politically exposed. I'm talking about a person of interest. A person of interest is that, look, I have got court cases. I have court cases. I have people that have shined, signed sureties for me. I am on bond. I am on bail. And therefore, therefore, before I go out, before I go out, it is only prudent that i go and tell the police because i'm a person of interest because if they if i just pitch up on or at the airport and they hear dad is here they might think i want to run away they might think i want to run away look at kaiza zul look at kaiza zul he had bond he had whatever whatever and he had just disappeared in thin air it is not that I don't have the I don't have the, the the right to move. It is not that I'm not free to move. I am free to move. But because I am I know that I'm a person of interest, 
it is important that I go and inform the police. It is very important. So even yourselves, you have got a case kukoti, you have got a case kuriwa kapokola, and you want to, to move. It is only fair, take, take a, a phone, call that arresting officer, call whoever, because you are a person of interest. Whatever you are doing, let the police know. Let the relevant authority know that you are doing this. If you are a suspect, if you are an accused, if you are on bond, you are on bail, it is always good practice. Not that I insist. It is not that you go to the law and say, where is it written? No. But it is good practice that you inform the police. It is very important. Now, I go back to the issue of, to the issue of, uh, to the issue of uh, politically exposed. Balungu is politically exposed. Is a former president. You see, now I'm going into the politics now. I'm going to the politics. I was talking about from the law point of view, this is all I've been saying, is that we have a right, but then there are these good practices that you, you need to apply. Now, let's talk about the politics. Let's talk about the politics. Now, when, I'm, when you are doing politics, at politics, they have an politics they are one politics it is it is a different it is a different realm altogether it is a different realm altogether these things that i was talking about these are from the law point of view from good practices point of view but in when we enter into the terrain of politics it is different even what is legal if the politics does not favor it, politics will make it illegal. Mumfui kishasan. Ngandiran that politics they have an. This is what it means. You must be able to see beyond the obvious in politics. In politics, in politics, don't talk about your law, your law, your law. Yes. Yes, we all have laws. We are so all supposed to follow laws. But let me tell you, politics has got its own law. Politics has got its own law. And it doesn't matter where you are, whether in Zambia, whether in America. Politics, it has got its own rules. Politics has got its own rules. Separate from the rules that you talk about. If you can't realize that, then you are not a good politician. If you can't realize that, Politics has got its own rules. And these rules can actually suspend the rules, the, the, the constitution as we know it, as you would argue it in court. This is a fact by H. Me, I speak so much here on this platform, especially for those people who would want to be in politics. For the young people who are growing, I want them to know the real truth. The real truth is that let no one cheat you that no i mean the law the law the law when you enter into the realm of politics you have to remember that there are rules that operates in politics and those rules my friend they are powerful political rules are more powerful than the constitution that you talk about they are more powerful and if you think you can upset this rule, you will not survive in politics. If you think you can upset this rule, you will not survive in politics. What do I mean? For example, by Edgar, by Edgar Lung, he is politically exposed that former president and whatever, whatever, whatever. But the moment by President Edgar Chagwalungu plays politics, seems to be in politics seems to be active in politics even what is so obvious may become complicated this is a fact even what is so obvious may become complicated because politics 
because he has entered into the realm of politics. He's not just a former president. He's not just politically exposed, but he's a person that is in politics. And as such, political rules will apply. You can say whatever it is. No, he has got he has got the rights. Hey, whatever, whatever, whatever. Hey, you are denying him his rights. Human rights will say whatever they want. But politics has got its own rules. The moment is in the realm of politics. It has got its own rules. I'll give you an example away from Zambia. If you look at American America, we have got a number of former presidents. A number of former presidents. We have got Bill Clinton. We have got George Bush. You remember these people. These people, do you hear them being called Kuma cases? Uh, what is this guy? Um, uh, uh, Obama. Do you hear them being followed to say, no, there are these cases and so on and so forth? Why? Because they are only former presidents. They are politically exposed, yes. And they are former president, yes. So meaning the vetting always apply. Whenever they are going somewhere, the clearance is always there. The clearance is always there. But that clearance is within the norm. But if they were politically active, a good example is now a Donald Trump. Donald Trump, because he wants to come back, because he's active in politics, what is happening to Donald Trump? Donald Trump is being followed, and this is America, for goodness sake. It's America. The, 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 the first democracy. Donald Trump is being followed. Donald Trump cannot do anything anyhow. Donald Trump cannot travel anyhow. He can't. Donald Trump. He can't. Because he's in politics. Are you telling me, George Bush, who was involved in the Iraqi saga, are you telling me there are no cases around him? How come George Bush, I mean, is being respected, is quiet and everything? How come? It is because... He is not in politics and therefore is just being taken for who he is as a politically exposed person, as a former president and nothing else. But if at all George Bush wanted to come back into politics, wanted to contest again, you will see what cases will follow him. You will see the restrictions that will be there if he wants to move. Because he's politically active. So it is the same here. But President Edgar Chagwalungu, if he was clearly, clearly away from politics, if he was clearly a former president, a statesman, some of these things would not be a problem. Yes, he would still be, he would still need to be cleared. But it will not be complicated as it is being now. It will not be. He's a former head of state. He's a, he's a statesman. There wouldn't be that problem. He would go to different places. Yes, he would need that clearance, but there would be no issue in clearing him. But as long as he's leaned towards politics, these issues start coming in. So these issues are coming in, Kuliba Edgar Chagwalungu, not because he, he doesn't have the, the right to move, not because he's politically exposed, not because he's former president, but because he is leaned towards politics. And you can say whatever it is from a human rights point of view, in politics you need to realize that politics has got its own rules. So even moving from from Lusaka going into another town because he's politically inclined politically inclined because he has not clearly stated whether he's, he's, he's active or whatever it is not clear but we can see that he's politically inclined because he's politically inclined 
it is important that whenever he's moving, he, he, he has the clearance. It is important. Even me, if, I've, if I command as a politician and I'm active, but if I command so much support that if I move today, I go to Ndola and a number of people would come around me, a number of people would come around me, trust me, it is only good that you inform the police in Ndola that Ndei Sakundola, you let the command in Ndola know that you are coming to Ndola and you are coming by road. So that if people gather around you, the police know. It might be for your own protection. Because you can be attacked. But how will the police protect you if they don't know? But if the police know that Tayali is coming today, he's coming into Ndola. And Tayali commands, you know, some support. People do come around him. The police can protect you. So then just look, let us not just look at it from the, from the negative side. No. Sometimes it's for our own good. And I'm saying this truthfully, objectively. Objectively. So, sometimes when we are making a move, we anticipate some kind of, uh, you know, crowd around us. It is only a good courtesy, politically, to let the police know. It is only a good courtesy, especially if you don't want confrontation. If you if you want confrontation, well and good. If you want confrontation with the government, well and good. Uh -uh, my bundles are finished. My bundles are finished. My bundles are finished. I think I I, I think I I I will I'll, 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 I'll leave it there anyway, just to say so. In a, in a nutshell, what I'm just saying is that I'm not against my Edgar Lungu, but I'm just saying, let us be real. Let us be real. Let me see if I can buy bundles. My bundles, yeah.